The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Eastern Time. we got 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. It's going to be an interesting Wednesday of action, I imagine, folks, as the market digests Google. Microsoft earnings last night. Microsoft just market loving it, up almost 10%. They're going to have to digest the Microsoft, Microsoft, Microsoft and Activision deal, getting blocked by the U.K. watchdog. Doesn't seem to be pulling back Microsoft at all. Activision pulling back justifiably so if that deal is not going to get done chipotle power and higher we got weaker dollar this morning in pretty dramatic fashion from midnight last night at about 101.83 with down basically 50 ticks from there 101.35 pushing the lows that we had yesterday before we accelerated higher in the dollar we jump to yields right now the 10-year seems like the trend is continuing man you did see a drop off this morning at about 7 30 and the market gets almost it all back we're basically pushing the highs of yesterday afternoon we got up to 115 30 we're at 115 23 right now in the 10 year you jump over to crude price of crude continuing lower so what do we have dollars just jump around okay what to make of that the trends in other areas though crude lower prices yields lower prices market pretty dramatically lower prices yesterday. Now we get to the market. You jump over to the S&P. I've been talking about this trend line. Back, back it up a little bit further, okay? And the market is fluid, folks. It's always changing. You know, these channel lines, we'll see where they develop. Definitely got ahead of itself Monday, okay? But this was a channel line we're talking about last week a little bit. It was really confirmed on that Thursday drop-off. Friday, you saw it hit that area as well. It turned into an area of support on Monday, turned into a slight area early Tuesday, and then yesterday, okay, you get one shimmy right around it, and then boom, you take off, and look where you hit, man. You hit kind of the bottom of that, okay? And that bottom was not made from that price point, okay? That is, number one, a parallel line, and it's a parallel line off the one low, the two lows, excuse me, and depending how you adjust this, right, it's not going to line up exactly parallel if you do, but pretty close to the third. If you're using a little bit of linear regression, if you're familiar, where does that line end up? It may end up right there with a little bit of linear regression. It may end up even a little bit higher when you take all the lows and the highs in terms of where that channel develops, right? Keep your eye on that channel line. It is a very steep channel line, even if we catch bounces to the top side. Boy, you're talking about dropping about 20 points a day on that angle in the S&Ps over the long haul. And we get another important number tonight with meta earnings. Tomorrow we get Amazon. We get Apple in a week. We get a Fed decision is it one week from today? I think it is. Time is flying. May 3rd is one week from today. April 26th, Fed Day. Apple earnings May 4th, uh, as if you don't have enough going on. All right, let's jump into Microsoft earnings, as that is powering the NASDAQ higher in dramatic fashion. NASDAQ right now, NASDAQ 100 at least, up 134 points. Yeah, that's a full percent. You see the action yesterday. You see the acceleration. Now, what did happen here, that first thrust higher at about 4 o'clock, that 10-minute bar, that was both Google and Microsoft. Google's given it up, okay? Microsoft has traded higher. You jump over to Microsoft shares. There's your acceleration. We're pushing 297. Now, let's break into the numbers, man. They are strong numbers, and it's always interesting when you see the growth of these companies like Azure. 31% is what Azure is growing at. Profit and sales top the estimates. AI products are drawing promising customer interest. CFO says, folks, I'll tell you. As somebody that runs a business that operates online, you better believe that my brain is operating. My dad is gung-ho, rightfully so, man, about AI and what it can do. And when you approach things from a much more macro perspective, some of these larger companies, right, that are running things, the ability, uh, listening to some of these and very smart CEOs at conferences talking about, you know, you can say, hey, create this, code it, put it on the website, market it, send out a mass email. You can just like roll it off, right? And these AI machines are going to create a product page, program that product page, uh, apply banner ads that you, your company 
has to that product page, create a funnel off of that product page, capitalizing on people's email addresses, uh, you know, code it all, you get the point, right? Pretty staggering that you're gonna be able to do that. It's gonna be able to do it all. We are at the very infancy of AI when you think that we're just using it for very simple things on a consumer basis right now, right? Uh, write me a thousand word argument as to why you should be in fixed income versus stocks when the Fed is nearing the end of a hiking cycle. Now, ChatGPT is not updated recent enough to do that, but those are the things that we're kind of using it for right now, which are just staggering in their own right. It's gonna keep going from there, and you're seeing glimpses of it in here, which is why I mention it, and to go over back to the numbers. So, raw numbers, they beat 245 versus 224, okay, and they beat by $1.9 billion for the quarter. 52.9 billion versus 51 billion. That's $1.9 billion, right? Azure cloud computing business climbed 31%, excluding the impact of currency fluctuations, uh, matching predictions. Sales from the commercial cloud products like Azure and Office Productivity Software rose 22% to $28.5 billion. Imagine that. They have a segment of their business that's almost $30 billion, and they are growing 22% in that segment. So total sales growth has decelerated to single digits after five years of more robust gains. Yeah, Azure and Office 365. And we use Office 365 in the most rudimentary way as a business, as in we use it for our emails through TFNN, and we use it for the applications, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint, et cetera, you gain access to. But when all of this is tied in, and then you tie things into OpenAI, their $10 billion investment into OpenAI, which is really nothing for a company like that, $10 billion, if it can change the way they operate. I mean, just think of how it's already changed the way you think about Microsoft's Bing. They might get the Samsung contract. Probably the easiest $10 billion you're ever going to spend shoring up open AI. It almost, I was thinking about recently with Meta earnings coming up tonight, when Meta, Facebook, purchased Instagram for a billion dollars. And if you go back to the time, folks, it was a staggering thought that you're just buying the picture sharing app for a billion dollars that you can put um, filters on it, right? Instagram's first kind of fame was that they had all these cool filters. Think about nowadays, how filters are everywhere, but you first to the market, they cornered it. I mean, what is Instagram worth now? A couple hundred billion dollars, maybe some estimates while they across there, obviously just part of meta in terms of where they fit, but $10 billion to have chat GPT when that name has become synonymous with AI and what it's going to do to society. So talking about the numbers, Yeah, Bing took share in the US search market without offering metrics. Bing has more than 100 million daily active users and mobile Bing app installations have quadrupled since the launch of AI powered Bing in February. Percentages on small numbers can be deceiving. Okay, so quadrupling on nothing is still nothing, to put it just how it works. Uh, according to one stack counter, Bing had less than 3% of the global internet search engine market as of March. Now think about that, and then think about how we talked about that they're potentially doing a deal where Samsung is gonna have their phones, the default search feature, go to Bing, and how the tide could just shift dramatically. That's gonna be a headwind on Google, man, in a big way. They do have YouTube, and there's nothing like YouTube under that property, but Google this morning, barely flat to positive. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back with our man, Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade Network. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We've got the S&P up at 13 points right now. You take a look at the SPY on this chart, that channel line I was talking about, pretty well defined, right? Interesting that you got above it for the beginning of Monday and the beginning of Tuesday. But boy, when we accelerated lower. And yeah, I'd keep your eye on it, man, because that's a price point of about 409. And maybe that's your trading range. As we get up to that price level, you're talking about 13, 14 points above where we're at right now. There are just mammoth moves in this market that if you can get a nice area that they're trading in, folks, you're talking about three to four points in the S&P, even if you're talking about, uh, excuse me, that's in the SPY, as in 30 to 40 points in the S&P. And so you keep your stops in place, you can be wrong many times, you catch a move of 10 to 20 points, it speaks for itself. Okay, checking back in, Google shares, basically flat right now, and Microsoft pushing 297 right now. Let's see what else we have pulled up here for articles. Yeah, Boeing. So this one's an interesting one. They plan to hike how many planes they're making. That's what it's supposed to say. Plan 737 rate hike as jet maker sticks with delivery goal. Uh, rate hike in this environment, everyone's thinking interest rates, right? No, but they're going to make more of the plane. I think it was 37 a day. I think I saw it somewhere. Let's see. Yeah, recently, manu recently uncovered manufacturing defect would not dent its delivery and cash targets as they're going to ramp up the how many jets they make later this year. And I did see it. Maybe it was in one of the other articles. So let's see. The company affirmed its target of handing over between 400 and 450 of the narrow body jets this year, delivering let's see, 70 to 80 of the 787. Yeah, nonetheless, the market loves that news, man, because they came out with that manufacturing defect that was going to set them back a bit. When you jump over to Boeing shares, we're up to 208. There was the drop-off there, that prior Thursday, I believe, so you almost get it all back. 
Pretty interesting. You go from 214 down to 198. Right now we're pushing 208 for Boeing. You take a look at long term of this one. Channel line not really intact. That was on there from a while ago. But yeah, quite the acceleration from 120 up to 202. Kind of just the top of that consolidation area we've been chopping around this year between 200 and 220. If you're in Boeing, I keep your eye on either of those sides of Boeing shares, 200 to 220 in terms of where we could end up. Yeah, this one, this one's a different, interesting one, man. I was talking about it on my program yesterday. This article's out last night, and what's Elon up to with Tesla? Right? Uh, he is not one to look for short-term profits. He'll gamble everything on a, a long-term success. He's done it many times. You think he started PayPal with Peter Thiel, and he almost lost all that money putting it into Tesla. And, you know, with high risk is high reward. And, boy, you don't play for much bigger stakes than playing for the reward of being the richest person in the world. He's got SpaceX in there as well. So if he thinks the game is now they're at a point that they've had incredible margins, and guess what? That's not the game anymore. The game is we're coming for everybody. We're going to crush margins. We're going to corner market share. And listening to one analyst last night late on Bloomberg, and they were saying, hey, if this is Tesla's game plan, consider yourself in Ford or GM, and it's already tough the amount of money they're putting into that segment. Now it's going to be tough that you're going to be competing with Tesla that's crushing their margins to gain market share. Maybe that will hinder you a bit from the investments you're making and maybe pull those investments back a little bit, even in the short term, right? They know they have to get there eventually. But if you have Tesla now undercutting prices like they didn't imagine only six months ago, it may impact your investments in that, which would have even further. I mean, that's the goal, right? You come out as strong as you can. You crush your competition. You tell them there's no point of going in there. And I was looking at Tesla's yesterday, folks. So that matters. As in the prices have come to a point that you say to yourself, geez, this is getting silly, man. I can get a Model Y that's got a hatchback. And some of these, well, I'm going to pull it up, man, because some of the speed, you, even the top end one that does like 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds with a max speed of 150 something, 150, 155, even those vehicles, not that expensive compared to what you're paying for a lot of cars these days. But the Model Y, Elon Musk's bid to dominate global car making is taking a new turn and dividing opinion. Yeah. Is he Henry Forge, Ford of the Model T uh, or Steve Jobs and the iPhone? He's trying to bring it to everybody, man, in terms of the electric vehicles. Cut prices at least uh, half a dozen times this year. Almost a third of the cost of the top-selling model. 29% cheaper in just three months. That's staggering, okay? And I, I reiterate it again because there is something going on here in pretty dramatic fashion. At first, all these cuts were coming. And I was saying this is happening everywhere. Read the stories, okay? Car companies, they just don't tell you how much they're charging you for the price of their vehicles because they like to haggle you once you get on the lot. It's this market. It's giving it up a little bit here, huh? Yeah, we just got a drop of almost 10 points right now as we come into the open with about six minutes to go. But they're not dropping their vehicles by 29%, folks, okay? Because that would be showing up. So what to think of that? Well, number one, I'd be wary in Tesla, okay, because you were just at 100. You're at 160. You were at 200 almost a year ago, okay? So this market has not found a bid yet with some extreme volatility in the process there. But we are coming into an area of potential resistance when you look at that chart, right? That high that we turned around, not a coincidence, folks, that the lows of last May are where you chopped around at in October. It's where you chopped around at in February. And I imagine that he is making a big play here for market share and he's gonna get it with 29% man 29% you got a SUV that's under the average price of the new vehicle in the US and people aren't gonna deny that in terms of where you go the stock has soared dramatically in recent years yeah as they mentioned but here's the part ramping up production capacity okay check out Shanghai from where we were in 2020 to where we are in 2023, check out Texas coming on the line in the beginning of 2022. All right, so they're ramping it up. 
and I imagine this is the play here in terms of ramp it up in pretty dramatic fashion to forego the margins we've been used to. That could really weigh on Tesla's valuation in the short term because you look at Tesla right now, folks, all right? I mean, we almost forget it. Remember the days where it was talked about? Tesla's a $510 billion company. Important to remind yourself of this. Ford, it won't even tell me. No, it's calculating. Come on. Come on, what's our Ford market cap? What are we at? Come on, thinkorswim, catch up. We'll go to GM. They're going to give me a number here. GM, $45 billion. You can buy 10 GMs for one Tesla. Okay. You going to tell me Ford yet? Yeah, why isn't it? It's not giving me Ford for some some reason. Uh, you get the point with GM, $45 billion, Tesla 500 plus billion dollars. So be careful out there with Tesla shares because they are making a bid for everybody. And in the short term, that's going to be tough on the equity. You even trade down to 80, right? You trade down to 80 on this equity. Remember how many times it's split. Okay. You trade down to 80, you're still a company valued five times GM. You say, well, geez, that's, that's bonkers. Yeah, it is bonkers because Tesla's valuation could be considered bonkers. And if they're going for everybody and they're going to undercut price and they're not going to make margins, be careful. All right, folks, this is going to be an interesting open. We got Google shares flat. We got Microsoft up almost 25 bucks. Stay tuned. We're coming back in three minutes. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We've got markets open. you got Google shares basically flat right now to the penny. Got to love that, right? you got Microsoft shares. How do they react? Up 7.8% on their numbers. Chipotle Mexican Grill up $145, up 8.15% for Chipotle. Boeing with the news that they're going to be pushing out more 737 Max. They're up about 4%. We jump over to some of the other companies catching a tailwind on some of these numbers. Amazon charging higher maybe on some cloud there from Microsoft with AWS, of course, but Amazon giving back a lot of it. You're only up by 2% right now. Uh, what else? Meta shares, they were higher on some of the other news. You're up by about 1.6% right now from Meta. We also get Snapchat with their numbers on Thursday. Snapchat up 1.3%. You just gave up about 10 pennies though on the open as that drops a bit on Snapchat. I think we get Intel as well on Thursday. Intel catches a bid. Intel, jump over to the earnings tab. Yes, we do. We get Intel with their numbers on Thursday as well. So we got Intel, Amazon, Snapchat numbers on Thursday, Meta after the bell tonight, all of them trading higher. And Google shares right now uh, marginally higher. It's going to be an interesting day, man, in dramatic fashion with all these companies. Not quite sure where they want to go, right? How does Google end up flat after spiking a 110? And boy, those Google numbers, they were strong. We'll get into them a little bit later in the hour. Let's see how the dollar's trading right now. They're talking about the dollar in the den, rightfully so. Whoo, watch out below, man. No wonder they're talking about the dollar. Wow. That was quite a drop-off, man. The dollar from 101.30 to 101 on the ball. And we got the NASDAQ still sitting up 120 points. Yeah, but we just dropped, what, 30 or 40 points? What's that bar? That's the bar that just began. Let's put it on in one minute just to see how that open just traded right now. Yeah, 930. We were up at 12,955. We give up 30 quick points. And let's see how, because these these tech companies are going to define it, man. That's why I keep checking in on them. Uh, Microsoft, I imagine, going to finish the day in pretty strong territory. But Google, I don't know. There's some There's some weakness there. To put it lightly, as Google now down half a percent, dropping at 104. See how Amazon's trading as they were higher. Amazon now 1.8. Let's see how Apple. So Apple off about four tenths percent right now. Apple, they'll be out with their numbers next week. Okay. What else do we have up here? Ah, yes, First Republic. This is the one we need to get to. Okay. FRC. Talked about it yesterday, right? And Let's see. Yeah, this is where I was doing the program yesterday. First Republic still at about 12 bucks. Still, I came into the 10 o'clock hour at 11.75. Not sure why it took until 12.30 for the market to figure out that this may not exist as a business. You know, they are a business that takes deposits and loans out money. If nobody wants to give them money to deposit that they can use as a bank, they're not going to exist as a business. When I brought it up yesterday, I think it was valued. At $2 billion? Let's see if I was correct. Yeah, it was valued at $2 billion as a business yesterday. What is their business if no one's going to give them money? Okay? So, today, down another 15%, and that's off the close of yesterday at 8. You're down to 7 bucks from almost 12 where you came into that open. That's a $5 haircut. What's that? Another 40%? I would just take my money, man. This company is worthless. Their name, unfortunately, is tarnished forever, and it's not going away. And you're seeing it drag down everything. Now, PacWest, right? They had some big numbers yesterday, but check it out. You just dropped, what, almost a full dollar from where it was on the open? Again, I don't expect they'll give it up. Much different numbers, much different in a big way in terms of PacWest. They're up by 10%. You see the acceleration last night. First Republic, they just lost all their money. They have $100 billion on hand. The market thought they were going to have $140 billion. And of that $100 billion, 30 billion is from the bank bailout. So they only really have 70 billion. And who are those 70 billion? And what are they doing keeping their money in that bank when you're just watching that stock accelerate? I imagine we're going to get news today or even tomorrow because a lot of people, if you had money in that bank and you saw those numbers, that was the last limit. And that's probably what's going on. And people probably know that the run has already began, similar to how it was done in Silicon Valley Bank. And if you remember, when the run began on Silicon Valley Bank, the stock accelerated like this. And probably because people somehow know that there's tens of billions of dollars getting taken out of that bank and it's not going to be able to exist in two to three days. Now, can they find a buyer? I don't know. I don't know if they can find a buyer, man. This is where things get interesting. There's no guarantee that people get their money back in here. So we'll see. We'll go from there. But First Republic continuing to drop right now. We get the NASDAQ 100, 12,920 right now. Google shares at about 104. 
nothing too dramatic. Closed yesterday about 104.50 for Google shares and Microsoft up about 7% right now, up $19. We jump over to that Activision Blizzard. Yeah, down 10%, so it's obviously going to hurt Activision Blizzard. I wonder how it's weighing on Microsoft, right? What is the contribution to this share? Does the market like that, that they're not spending 70 plus billion dollars potentially? I imagine they might, yeah. You can create a lot with $70 billion in terms of gaming, but video games are fickle, man. It's the one area of business. It's not like movies, where you can just create a movie and probably get a big enough star. Video games have cult followings, and there's been plenty of stories of people trying to get into video games and spending more money than they would like to admit and not having any success. And that's probably why they were trying to do this deal. Now, it's hard to argue it's not anti-competitive when Microsoft makes the Xbox. Of course, they eventually have a plan to use their control of a gaming company like Activision Blizzard for a competitive advantage for their Xbox. Of course they do. Okay, things are pretty simple. So not out of line to think that that could be anti-competitive for consumers. When I saw Buffett jump on the deal, he was doing an ARB deal, right? He was buying Activision Blizzard saying, hey, I know this is a binary choice. It either gets done or it doesn't. One of the things he said was that if it doesn't get done, the company still got tremendous value, okay? That's why he was loading up in here, but he saw the opportunity where the probability it gets done was higher. And this is just the UK watchdog in terms of it's not a complete done deal. Um, but the UK blocks the Microsoft Activision deal. The gaming deal would harm competition on the cloud as well. And uh, yeah, they're going to appeal that decision. $69 billion takeover is what it is. And yeah, this is uh, the beginning of the battle as they try and appeal it, but probably not what they wanted as they come into it. They, they remain fully committed, though, is what they say there. So that's going to be an interesting one to see how it plays out. But anytime you have smart money like that, where Buffett's in there saying, I think there's a probability that it could get done. We get the markets just hanging out. Pretty interesting. 4,100 right now. We go back to the SPY. Go a little bit shorter term to go back to that channel line on the SPY. Yeah. And if you're looking for the bottom of that channel line, you're looking at about 105.50. You got up to maybe 409. That would be an area I'd be looking to short for today right now for the SPY, and that would correlate in the S&Ps. You're talking about a price level about 41.17, maybe 41.20 in the SPY, and on the low side of that, you're looking for 1,084. Now, you jump over to a company like Meta, up 1.2%. They're a different story than YouTube and a different story, of course, than Microsoft, right? The advertisers that run for Meta a different story than maybe who's running for YouTube. I was listening to a great analyst, I can't remember his name on Bloomberg last night, saying, you know, there's hesitation to for all television, cable TV type spending to go over to YouTube. It's basically what it is, and I would agree, man. I watch it in my households, kids watch it in the households. YouTube is like the new TV that's free. Meta, different story, small business spending, ad spending. We're gonna talk some Forex when we come back, folks. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstat. Don't go away, we'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, 
the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P right now up about six points, trading right at about 4,100 as we speak. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegsat. Folks, you can read Teddy's Tiger Forex report every Monday when he puts out a new issue, along with updates throughout the week when warranted. You come on over to the newsletter tab at TFNN, click that subscribe button. It's $97 a month, folks. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can sign up for it while you listen to our man, Teddy Kegstad, and you gain access to the archive of the webinar Teddy just did last Wednesday. Uh, and boy, we got some currency action this morning, to put it lightly. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Uh, boy, where do you want to kick things off, man? We're in some earnings season, but boy, dollar index. I was jumping around to some of the pairings, getting ready to talk to you this morning. And pretty interesting uh, when you put them a little longer term, just the divergences you've been talking about in terms of where those pairs are <laughs> versus just the dollar index. Uh, where do you want to kick things off this morning, Teddy? Uh, well, we have to start with the Japanese yen. Tomorrow we have a rate decision, and finally there's going to be a rate hike. So um, we have the new leadership at the uh, BOJ, and uh, we've been waiting. We've been talking about this literally for half a year, you know, as they were transitioning and where they're going to finally do something because they haven't done anything for, you know, ever. <laughs> so um, now, is it a big deal? Not really. I think the market's already got it priced in. So I think that's one of the reasons why you are seeing a little bit of a, a bearish tone on the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen today. Um, one thing you have to really pay attention to the dollar index today is that, you know, it's the euro that's driving this. The euro is making new highs today. It just recently broke out to the upside this morning. And uh, this is this is something that I think is a head fake rally. You have to look at the other currencies as far as most of the bat, the, the major pairs that are not as strong as, say, the euro and the pound and what have you. Uh, they're actually down, you know, so or flat. So um, that's something that you have to really uh you know, pay attention to. You know, um, the British pound uh, is is something that also is. You know, right now they're not making new highs, even though they're higher on the day. We have a head and shoulders pattern forming. You know, you also have the same thing uh, with. We have a rate decision coming up next week as well. We have a hike that we know is going to come most likely a quarter point. So, and uh, the bonds they're rallying. The ten years are rallying right now. Also, all the interest rates, the yields are pulling back. You know, because the you know the consensus is is that the Fed is going to be done after uh, the meeting next week, and I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I was walking through the charts as you were talking about them. Pretty interesting moves. You mentioned the euro pushing highs. Uh, I pull up the dollar index yesterday, man. We almost pushed 102 on that acceleration we just got. You basically just almost hit 101. But as you mentioned, pretty interesting that we have higher price in bonds, lower yield. Uh, I was looking at even the 10-year. I know you love the 30-year as well, but that trend, mm -hmm. I mean, there was no movement like we saw in the dollar index. Yes, we had some volatility yesterday, 
but nothing like what we saw in the dollar index in terms of we it seems like yields just continuing to drop here. How do you make sense of that, Teddy, with the Fed? Because I agree with a lot of what you say. And right now we're seeing those numbers continue. It looks like higher price, lower yield, uh, like you mentioned, as we come into a Fed hike probably a week from today. OK, well, that's actually something that I can I do have a theory on. Uh, Let's first hear of all, the market. The market, the market is always correct. You know, I'm sure to, you, you would hear on certain other places that uh, the market's getting it wrong right now. Uh, no, the market's getting it right because the market pricing is coming because we have a banking crisis. You have all the central banks that are providing the liquidity and they're buying up these assets because remember, they are we don't get do-overs in the regular business world. The banks are getting a do-over. They made incredibly, horribly stupid decisions buying treasury the treasuries literally a year ago so now the fed is buying them back at those prices meaning they get a complete do-over it's a reset so if they're buying assets at a, at a at a discount they have to unload them eventually so right now that's why they have a coalition of all the central banks are pumping up our debt market right now because they have to dump them and guess what yields pricing will have to go lower even if the fed was to stop raise, raising rates we're at a price point that's it's it's out of it's out of whack. Market's always correct, okay. So and that's something that I think we're seeing right now. If you look at the thir the thirty year and the ten year, you have head and shoulders patterns forming, just like you have in the British pound. The euro is breaking out to the upside. Next week we have our Fe our Fed meeting. If we don't take out highs, if the dollar doesn't get crushed, and if yields don't keep on going down, well they're going to snap back the other way, which means we'll have a violent move to the downside in yields, meaning going higher going into next week. Then what would that do for the dollar? That would be very bullish for the dollar versus currencies like, for instance, the pound, you know, the yen, because <clears throat> their rate decision will be over. And guess what? They're raising a quarter point tomorrow. And then what are they going to do? Nothing. <laughs> so so that means that in the, in the course of less than a week, we're going to negate their their hike just in our with our central bank alone, you know. Yeah. So and I think that's what you're seeing right now is this really tug of war going on. And the reality is, I don't care if you're the Federal Reserve, the BOJ, the BOE or whatever. No man, no woman, no one entity can control a market. And that's what they're trying to do. And the markets will always teach you that that ain't working. Yeah, I mean, the banking deal is pretty intense, man. First Republic, those numbers that they put out in their earnings, um, mm -hmm. you don't have to be a, a, an accountant to understand that I don't understand how those numbers work going forward when everybody just wants their money back, rightfully so. I mean, who's who's choosing to do business with a bank like that? And that's just the tip of the banks and, and, like you said, some of those decisions. Again, you don't have to be a genius, folks. They locked in, you know, their businesses, they take in deposits, right? And then they loan it out and make more money on the loan that they put out than what they're giving people for the deposit. And they took all that money and locked it in long term at like one and a half percent ballparking. But, you know, that's right. trouble for sure. Uh, what do you think about crude? We got lower prices than <laughs> crude. Again, at $76, down about a dollar right now on my on my chart for light sweet crude. What do you think of that action? We've kind of filled that entire gap from the OPEC plus cut. You you got the you said the word right there the gap and the Tiger Forex report readers know that I was saying you know the old trader adage is all gaps get filled we've been talking about that you know since they broke out to the upside a couple weeks ago and that's what they're doing they're filling the gap I think it's going to stabilize for a little bit um, overall I'm bullish crude. Uh, but I think, yeah, I think the, the gap needs to be filled. And then after that, we'll see a little consolidation and then just get we're waiting for the next the news event, if you will, whatever. I'm sure something will come out from OPEC or somewhere around the world about that. And it'll cause a spike in oil again. I don't see us going into summertime with crude oil prices going down, especially as demand is going to be higher. Yeah, especially when you know you got OPEC plus that. Is, is an active player, to put it at least, with some type of sand in, in the ground, and, um, line in the sand, in terms of where they're comfortable with that price. Teddy, real quick, we got about a minute left. Could you let everybody know, because I was listening to that webinar you did last week, it was a week ago today, and you did just a tremendous job walking through the pairings and what you were looking at. Can you let people know when they sign up the archive, what you talked about last week that they gain access to? Sure. Thank you about that, uh, by the way. Uh, yeah, we talked about the central banks, <clears throat> what's moving forward, how they're uh, interacting with each other and the, uh, the outlook of how they're going to behave over the next uh, three to six months. 
and also a lot of the divergence in the currencies. You know, we've been talking about this for six months, and it's really becoming not just relevant on a daily basis like today where you can see it, um, but it, just moving forward. We have uh, the whole world is splitting apart. We have uh, uh, we're on this side and you're on that side kind of thing happening. And most people, you know, we, we look in the United States like, you know, there's King Dollar and our markets are the real thing. But there's markets all around the world and they're starting to take a lot of strength away from us. I just thought it was great how you went kind of market by market and broke down the influences on each currency pair. Check it out, folks, under the thanks, newsletter Tommy. tab. Teddy, thanks so much, man. We'll talk to you next week, okay? Sounds good. Okay, stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the NASDAQ 100 up about 1% right now. S&P is sitting right at that 4,100 price point. You're up by one tenth percent right now. Dow up by 27. You get the Russell negative by seven. Checking in on First Republic. Basically making at least in session lows down 21.7%. And, you know, some of the numbers they talked about there were that somehow withdrawals had stabilized. They were only losing 2% of what they had from March until April. Uh, this will change things, though, folks. If you had money in First Republic, don't listen to what they put out Monday because the world has changed. At Monday, you were trading at seventeen dollars. You're now at six. Whoever has money in there is probably saying, "Give me my money back. I don't want to have to deal with your bank going insolvent and what that would entail." 
We check in on some of the companies with their numbers. Google catching a little bit of a bid on the open. You're up by a percent now to 105.69. Microsoft actually trades a little bit lower from where it was. Still up by about 7%. Chipotle Mexican Grill. Power and higher. 1998. Is that a new high? I think it is. I think it just got above the high. It did. 1958 was the high. Okay, that was 1998. Yeah, look at that, man. Whew, you were just at 1920. Add another 80 bucks on the open to Chipotle, up 12.2%. We check in on some of the other companies. Amazon catches a bit up 3.5%, probably on the Microsoft Azure, the cloud computing, AWS, in terms of accelerating higher. Amazon up 3.5%. You jump over to Apple shares. Up, ah, flat, Apple on those numbers. And let's see how Snap is trading. Ooh, there's a drop for you. Snap down about 8 tenths percent to 1008. They were up at 1040. Advertising going to be maybe a problem. Is Meta trading lower as well? No, Meta holding on to gains. Quite the divergence, right? Snap is all about advertising. So if they're down nine tenths percent, Google's up a percent, but Meta shares are up three percent. Nonetheless, markets in positive territory. Thanks so much for tuning in to start your trading day, folks. Stay tuned. We got a man, Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. Steve Rhodes did his program at 8 o'clock in the morning. That's going to be playing in his time slot at 11. Fast market at 12. And we got Basil Chapman filling in for our man Larry Pesavento. Live programming, folks. It's going to be an interesting day. We got meta earnings after the bell tonight. Trading higher, up 3% coming into those numbers. As our man Basil says, folks, the day is young. Not even a half hour into the trading day. Basil's up next. Have a great Wednesday, everybody.